right now if it wasn't for Roswell. Well, what we need is we need to be able to hear without their names and maybe changing a few things around. We all have to mm -hmm. change a couple of places and locations in every store we tell to protect yeah. the innocent and protect the world. But this should either be a book or it should be mm -hmm. four or five pages from each one of them that we can put on News for the Soul. And the general... Desperate. General Corso wrote an excellent book on that and covered all the back engineering, the crash sites, where they sent the information out to, where it went from Bell Labs to American Computer, all the way through, and, and tracks the whole history of, of uh, you know, the microwave, everything. Where could, where could we find him? I think, Nicole, we should try to find... Let's get him on the show. Yeah, I think it's the day after Roswell. It'd be kind of hard because he's on the other side right now. Oh, well, <laughs> so we got Danyan here. <laughs> hey, hey, when is our next Danyan communication with the April. extraterrestrial, I mean the other side? April yeah. 5th, there you okay, go. well, let's go for April 5th and try to communicate with this There you person. go. Okay. Yeah, I think his son is kind of carrying on the work, but the, the book is uh, Day After Roswell. Uh, what was really interesting is my family was uh, came from there. My dad was was in New Mexico, and and they knew the sheriffs and the people that were out there, you know, right on the uh, scene at the very beginning. And they talked a lot about it, and they said that those were good old boys, and they don't lie, and and they came back white as a sheet, and, and their whole realities were changed after that experience. So, hmm. you know, it's it it a very real thing, and, and I know these people out there, and, and they don't, you know, they're, they're salt to the earth people. They don't... Uh, they wouldn't be fabricated. Just a good old basic salt of the earth nuclear biogenetic physicist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, these are the sheriffs and the police that went out there on the first uh, the first call, and some of the other people involved. They they were actually the, I think it was Bob Frizzell where the crash happened. My grandfather sold him his farm equipment, and his windmills, and the watering systems out there. So this is. This goes back to your history of a belief system uh, long before there was the near-death experience. Exactly. Even as a kid, I had experiences, but I just missed them. I saw quite a few shifts even when I was a kid, but I just accepted it. a lot of it as, oh, well, I'm sure there's more out there. You know, it's a, it's a big... Like, like they say in contact, would be a terrible waste of space, you know, to, to have this multidimensional universe with just one one uh, civilization here. Well, do you, do you think, James, that you might be in some way a part of this genetic experiment or a part of this uh, uh, this creation of uh, a reality or com com communication, I mean, a, a form of uh, genetic manufacturing and Actually, you're a byproduct of that and you have such a closeness because of that? James, hold the, hold the answer. All right. Answer the question at the end of the break. Uh, we've just got one more break before the top of the hour. This is news for the soul. And just before we get back to our conversation, we just want to let you know regarding the event, for those of you who are signing up and planning on coming to the Shamanic Healing Journey. Before the break, Danny had asked uh, James a question. I think he was asking whether or not uh, my conception was different, I guess. than uh, uh, you know, I, I, What's really interesting, when I was born, uh, I... My mom didn't even know she was pregnant till way into the pregnancy. And uh -huh. yeah, my, <laughs> the plot thickens. Yeah. Jim Jam. And my sisters were less than ten months apart, and they're trying to figure out how mm. I, how I showed up, you know, in that short period of time. So, so uh, oh, you got? Do you have blue eyes and blonde hair? Yeah, I do. <laughs> you reptilian, Canadian <laughs> dog. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So I yeah. I remember you from the Andronian Wars. <laughs> James, about thirty, forty thousand years ago, when we created the uh, asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice yeah, uh, to hear from you again, James. <laughs> well, that would certainly explain why you have so much contact going on, I guess. Yeah, it, it the Pleiadians kind of... are blue-haired, blue-eyed, and blonde-haired, <laughs> and they're they're the group that was some are reptilian, but. Uh, this group are the good guys, or at least they're trying to be once again. So, uh, just quickly, James, if you can summarize what it is that, you know, about the, your concept of this. It's, it's kind of, uh, I know one thing is that even as a kid, I was very different. I was ultra sensitive, and I could hear what people, you know, I, I would hear what they were thinking, hear their words, and then feel what they felt all at the same time. It was very conflicting for me hmm. because people aren't congruent. 
and they would think one thing, say another, and then feel something else. And it was it was hard for me as a kid. I was very sensitive. Uh, it took me a while. I spent most of my time out in nature, but uh, I had to adjust to that. But, so in all of this, as you if you were going to sum it all up, James, and you were looking about these people coming back and connecting with us so that they, because we of the human, this of the 400,000 humanoids, we have deep emotion. Mm. We have a deep connection to love and hope and those kind of aspirations. Exactly. So what is really occurring is they are returning to connect with us so so that they themselves can either learn how to uh, genetically re put death, I mean, put love back in their lives and emotions back in their life because of the dimensional shift? That's just one small group. The group that <laughs> I'm, I'm working with, they're extremely advanced spiritually and emotionally. And and the love and the, and the, the joy coming from them is just phenomenal. You actually feel them before you even see their ship because it's wow. very, very advanced. And, and uh I think a lot of the ones that I'm working with are actually here to help us make that shift. They're coming in to lend their energies in to give us a, a, a little jump start, a little boost, and they're trying to divert us from these self-destructive patterns because those were part of their ancient history as well, and they've overcome them. But James, do you think that you could, in some small way, if you meet them tonight or tomorrow night, to ask them, to show themselves in the uh, in the Saudi Arabian, in the Saudi desert, and in the Kuwaiti desert, and in the the back the deserts of Baghdad, so that we can't shoot them down, but they can make themselves known, so that they can see there's a larger picture going on here than what they're doing. I've been praying for that actually. I wish they'd just go and nullify everything there, and and you know give people sticks to play with or something. I guess everything happens for a reason, though, and, and that would sort of take the lesson away from the people that are in the middle of learning it. Exactly. They yeah. take away our free will. Mm -hmm. they, they don't want to interfere in any way with free will, but they are really trying to inspire us to take the high road and stop, you know, the destruction and the war. Well, as a former Marine, the war. been in combat myself, I hope that they decide to take a little free will. And I'm giving them permission if you get a chance to talk to them, James. Mm -hmm. I think if enough people put that out there and make that part of their will, that they want to see this war not happen and they want to see, you know, us move into the next frequency, you know. And, uh, well, it, it really caught my attention when I was reading through your website and the homepage uh, where it says that the people of Earth are being offered a chance to join the rest of the universe in peace. So that really is the bottom line from your perspective. Exactly. They're trying to inspire us to choose universal peace and the basic, you know, brother, sister, love, and and honor the Creator within all creation. Because the ones I'm working with, they actually serve creation, and they see us as a part of creation that, that's in trouble right now and lagging behind. And so they're coming back to help us out. And they're, they're coming from many different levels, and they're actually coming back through time as well. So it's... it's uh, it's quite a, uh, an enigma. You know, we, we've got to do this again because there's just not enough time to get all this stuff in one hour, I'll tell you. So I hope you'll come back and talk to us again. And that you will invite us down to the ranch, James. Well, let me know when you want to come. That's great. We're, th we're coming. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Live thank you from very, the ranch. Thank you very much, James. Mm -hmm. Thank you uh, for joining us. Um, well, thank you for having me. I'll give out your website again, eceti.org. So go on there. You can hear see clips, hear a UFO clip, all kinds of stuff. Uh, Danian Brinkley and I will be back. More news for the soul. Thank you, Danian. Thank you. We love you, Bobby. Yes, and we're also going to be doing the Talking to the Dead thing. We haven't done that for a while because we've had so much going on. April 5th, we're going to do that. Danny will be here with us, just us, and taking your calls. Or talking to interdimensional, extraterrestrial, who knows. Or who knows.